who are the narrators of hadith for Shias from among Sahabas, Tabi'een, and Tabi Tabi'een? With regards to the Shia narrators of hadith amongst the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the Tabi Tabi'een, then as as if it's an oxymoron. If they're from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, then they're not going to be Shia. But obviously that's not what he means or it's not what she means, the questioner. We understand what they mean, inshallah, but the wording needs to be adjusted a bit. Okay? Because you're saying they're Shia narrators, but they're from the son of Salih. And that's, that's not going to work. It's oil and water. All right? Perhaps the question meant, who are the narrators from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een that were accepted by the Shia? And that can be found in the books of the people who call themselves Shia, the Rafila. That's perhaps that's what the questioner uh, meant. If I'm wrong, then they can correct me, inshallah, in the live stream. With that being said, the general rule is that the Rafida, the proper terminology for the people who call themselves Shia, whereas we just explained this last week in Philadelphia, in the Philly special, the live stream, and the first class on the prophetic Sirah, we explained this, is that they themselves like to be called Shia. They like to be called Shia. Shia is a pleasurable term for them. It's an honorific title for them. The word Shia is mentioned in the Quran. In several places, it's mentioned in the Quran. A Shia. A Shia. Shiatihi. And a Shia literally means someone who's devoted. Someone who is an adherent of your way. Someone who's a loyal supporter of you. So the word in itself denotes no negativity. In contrast to the word Rafidah which denotes negativity because they rejected and they refused. Rafadu. They made rafd. Okay? So, that's firstly. Secondly is, they themselves consider most of the companions to be apostates, while the other with the exceptions to a handful of companions. A handful of companions they believe remained upon Islam after the Prophet Sallallahu Okay? And obviously this is not including those who they accept from Ahlul Bayt. Those who they accept from Ahlul Bayt. So in most cases, the narratives of the Sahaba that they want to accept are those from Ahlul Bayt and those whom they consider to have remained upon Islam after the Prophet Wasallam's death. <laughs> as far as the Tabi'un and Tabi'in, tabi it's going to follow in that line. Those who they feel trod the path of those few isolated individuals. Uh, we don't have a lot of time for this question or this answer. The sciences of Hadith to the Rafidah and the Shia, whatever you wish to call them, is, is, is they have a system of hadith as well. They have their Bukhari as well. They have their books that they depend upon. Al-Kafi, whatever it's called. They have their books as well. Huh? And obviously their books are going to be full of lies, full of fabrications, and full of utter exaggerations. Huh? The, and just the common sense to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the Prophet sallam, gave the Prophet sallam, so much. He made him the best of his created beings. Yet still he's surrounding him around bad friends, monastics, cowards, womenizers, greedy people for power and status. These were the people that were surrounding the prophet. And it's a historical fact that no companion spent as much time with the Prophet of as Abu Bakr. We didn't say an Islamic fact. We didn't say a fact in Bukhari. We said historical fact among everyone. Abu Bakr was the one who was with him the most. And not Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. I want to understand this is not according to Bukhari, this is according to history, agreed upon. This is the closest, the closest one. So how could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose the one to spend the most time with him, a coward and a munafiq, and someone that Allah knew would apostate? That makes no sense. And the one that was the closest one to him, the best one, who will be the most loyal, was the one that didn't spend the most time with him. That doesn't make any sense. And what do you say about a man, Abdul Qawi, who surrounds himself with these types of men? Either he's ignorant, he doesn't know that they're, they're, they're two-faced backstabbing monafics. He doesn't know that. That means he's stupid and foolish. Or he knows that this is the quality of the company that he keeps, and he keeps that company. Either of the two. Ahlahu ma'mur. The sweetest of the two is what? It's bitter. You, your, your entourage are all evildoers. Why do you keep those people in your company? Because I don't know. That means I'm what? I'm stupid. I don't know who's who. I don't know what you do. How can your best friend? You don't know what he does for a living. You don't know the address of your best friend. You know the 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 the, the, the intimate details of your best friend. If you're with someone day to day and you've never met their children, you've never been to their house, you don't know nothing about them, what they do, how they make their money, then you're a foolish person. 
And if you do know that they're evildoers, they're two-faced, backstabbing people, and you keep them in your company, that means you're evil. So this is what you're saying about the Prophet based off of the company that he kept for all of those years. So that makes no sense whatsoever. Everyone understand this? And Allah knows best.